Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we have the book haul for April of 2024. I have 21 books here that I've gathered over the month. They're used books or books that were gifts. 12 of the 21 are hardbacks or hardcovers. This is a little unusual for me. By the way, does somebody know why there are two terms for hardcover or hardbacks? Is one UK and the other one US? If anyone knows, please comment below. I'd love to find out. So I have them in stacks here, and we're going to start with the hardbacks that I purchased, reference books that I purchased, paperbacks that I've purchased, and two gifts. The hardbacks I sourced from four different dealers on eBay, one from the UK, a comic book store from California, and two individuals right here in Winnipeg. So let's get started. My friend Jules Burt started collecting science fiction book club books from the late 1950s and early 1960s, I believe, and I found a really good deal in a couple of them from the UK. The Heirs of Earth by Brian W. Aldiss. You can see it kind of has... I call it an orange slice design, and that design carries over to the back where it says that it's a science fiction book club. So these are selections that the science fiction book club printed. It's in excellent condition. And you can see the application form for the book club right there too on the inside of the cover jacket. As well as there are some of the past choices. This one has a different cover design from that one. It's called The Inferno by Fred and Jeffrey Hoyle. I've read The Black Cloud by Fred Hoyle and also I believe it was called The Fifth Planet by Fred and Jeffrey Hoyle. Fred Hoyle was an astronomer, a very famous astronomer, and Jeffrey was his son, and they teamed together on a number of books. So this is, as well, a science fiction book club selection. Great condition. Copyright 1973. Let me just take a look at the copyright for the previous one. This one is copyright 1963. And the science fiction book club edition here is 1965. For those of you who have been following the channel, you know that I've been going through author Thomas M. Dish's science fiction. While I do love my vintage paperbacks, I couldn't pass up Tripolicity by Thomas M. Dish. This is a collection of his three first novels. So we have Echo Round His Bones, The Genocides, and The Puppies of Terra, otherwise known as Mankind Under Leash. Those novels are copyrighted between 1965 and 1967. I'm going to take these four together. This was a nostalgic purchase from a comic book store in California. These books only cost me about $5 each. I remember collecting the paperbacks by James Blish for the Star Trek original series. These novelizations were collected into four hardbacks called Readers. Here's the first one, the Star Trek Reader. And it contains, and this is a little weird, books 2, 3, and 8 of the series in paperback. But it also shows you the episodes that it adapts as short stories. 
I was a little worried about this way of collecting the books in the readers. Here's the Star Trek Reader, book two. But you'll see that the books are all collected. It's just not in the order they were printed in paperback. So, for example, in here, you'll see it's from Star Trek 1, 4, and 9. And here are the episodes that Blish adapts. Book 3. And book four. On the back of this book, they actually show you the episodes for all four volumes of the Star Trek Reader. Inside here, though, you'll see that we have Spock Must Die, the novelization, as the last one. This one's almost easier to see on the spine. We have the Hugo winners, volumes one and two, collected by Isaac Asimov, or edited by Isaac Asimov. So this hardback contains volume one and two of the Hugo winners, edited by Isaac Asimov. This covers the years 1955 to 1970. 1955 was the inaugural year for the Hugos. The Hugo Award is presented each year at the World Science Fiction Convention and is voted on by those attending the convention. So, Volume 1 and 2. But I was also able to find Volume 3. And this covers the Hugo Prize winners from 1971 to 1975. So, between the two volumes, I have 20 years of Hugo short story winners. Then, prior to the Hugos, there was definitely Golden Age stories. We have classic science fiction from the first Golden Age, edited by Terry Carr. And you can see a list of the short stories here on the back. This edition was printed in 1979. All the stories within here are from 1940 to 1942. And the last hardback, or the last hardback before we get to the reference books. You saw Triplicity by Thomas M. Dish before. I'm also interested in some of his more mainstream novels. This one I would characterize as perhaps a horror or supernatural novel. It's called The M.D. There's a great picture of Thomas M. Dish. This is copyright 1991. Now let's get to the reference books. I've already been using some of these in the videos prior to this one. I'll start off with one from my friend, Stephen E. Andrews. A hundred must read science fiction novels. What I love about the entries for these novels is they also have a category that says read on and has suggestions of other authors and other novels. I can recommend this book to you. I could hear Stephen E. Andrews' voice as I was reading through it. Someday, Stephen, I might make it to the UK and we'll see if I can get you to sign this copy. 
Unfortunately, someone's taken a green marker to the front cover. I don't know if I'll be able to get that off. The next reference book is related to the illustrated encyclopedia that I showed you last month. It is the original tome, The Encyclopedia of Science Fiction by John Clute and Peter Nichols. This copy came from the Burlingame Public Library in California. And it was for reference only, not to be taken from this room. It is actually in really, really good shape. I'm impressed. It has not had hard use. It looks like they have a date in here that it was received in February of 1994. I may do a separate video on this book and Stephen E. Andrews' book together. And the last reference book this was recommended by one of the people who post comments on my video. It is a bit of an older book. It's called Alternate Worlds, The Illustrated History of Science Fiction by James Gunn. Now this printing is from 1975. And the printing of it, there's the table of contents. And the printing of this book reminds me a little bit more of some of the printing I've seen in yearbooks. But we have some black and white photos. And there's also some color sections in here as well. But here's where it especially it started to remind me of a yearbook as we see pictures of authors. There's a lot of pictures in here that I've never seen on the internet of some of these authors. So perhaps I'll look at this one, the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction and the 100 Must Read Books in Science Fiction in another video that I'll talk about these reference books. All right, let's get to the paperbacks. First one is by an author that I'm getting ready to do a deep dive into his work. A.E. Van Vogt, The Far Out Worlds of A.E. Van Vogt. This is a collection of stories. This was first published in 1973. And this particular paperback is a new English library paperback from 1974. Beautiful cover art. Then I found A Choice of Gods by Clifford D. Simic. It's a Del Rey book. Copyright 1972. This book was printed in 1982. I was really pleased to find this book. It's not in the best of shape, but it is a good reading copy. For the first time in paperback, 13 original stories by the greatest writers of Astounding. This is the John W. Campbell Memorial Anthology. I've read a lot of history about John W. Campbell and Astounding. And in the community post, you'll even find an article or a review by Joe Brooks. So this collection is a final tribute to John W. Campbell by his writers. Copyright 1973. I believe John Campbell died in 1971. This book looked like a brand new book to me when I found it in the Goodwill store. I don't think I have any Jack Williamson, so I picked it up. The Black Sun. 
Looks brand new. It's from Tor. Copyright 1997. And this is the first mass market edition from 1998. Looks pretty good for a 26 year old book. I found this one also at that same Goodwill store. Edited by Damon Knight. Science fiction of the 30s. When I took a look through here, what I love is that each story actually has the art from the magazine that it came from. So there's a lot of interior art in this book. There's some strange looking aliens. It looks like a park ranger is just telling these guys, get out of here with your dead buddy. This is going to be a lot of fun. Now we're down to the gifts. Almost a year ago, I received a gift of Edgar Rice Burroughs books, as well as amazing story magazines from the 1960s. The person who gave me that gift from an estate held on to one magazine because they wanted to read it. It was the giant 40th anniversary of Amazing Stories. This is from April of 1966. Study Law at Home. And this last one comes from my Amazon wish list. Now, I don't think I've talked about this on my channel. In the description for the videos, I do have an Amazon wish list. This is the first time that I've received something from that wish list. I'm very grateful to John of Sci Fi Scavenger for Brian W. Aldous's Hot House. This was a very kind gift, and it arrived just as my channel was turning one year old. The note from Sci-Fi Scavenger says, A gift from Sci-Fi Scavenger. I read this recently and mostly enjoyed it. Certainly the world building is excellent and there are some wacky ideas in it. Most of all, the writing is lovely. Enjoy. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. It's been a great month of collecting books. I look forward to getting into them. Until next time, keep collecting.